Okay, so uh, we're going to just keep moving on on this four-wheeler here. Uh, there are a few issues I, after I got this thing running that I did notice. Um, I've got a little bit of a clunking noise uh, in the bottom end. It might be... I, I do know that they have the... I think it's the I think the clutch basket bolt comes loose or it's off the crank one of these bolts are known to come loose and I think that's might be an issue but it may not be this may just be a loud tinking engine um, but anyway what we're going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and pull the old coil off and uh, change the spark plug out and put a new AMR coil on I always had good luck with AMR stuff um, the the actual sticker kit was an AMR and I went ahead and got the coil for it um, and then we'll put a new spark plug boot on there and a brand new spark plug and we'll just kind of keep going this one at a time uh, with the electronic stuff and then uh, you know hopefully I'll be able to ride this for too long but this thing needs some heavy maintenance this guy I'll tell you what if this guy well first off I bought this thing off the internet and if I would not have bought this off the internet um, I probably wouldn't have bought it because there's just so much that I'm noticing wrong with this thing. The guy basically lied to me on the phone on all this stuff. Um, that or he didn't know what the hell he was talking about. If this four-wheeler was about four or $5,000, I probably would have sued the guy. Um, but it's not. So, you know, you hate to sue somebody for, you know, basically I spent 1800 bucks on the thing without shipping. So, you know, you don't get a whole lot of four-wheeler for 1800 bucks, and good luck finding one of these for 1800 bucks. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this uh, spark plug removed and this coil set up and uh, see how, how it runs and if I can uh, successfully install it. I will tell you this much. When you, uh, if you need to replace your coil or your spark plug boot, these AMRs do, get, I think, give a hotter spark, and they're just a better coil and I actually just wanted the spark plug boot cover and what had happened is I went into my basically incompetent Polaris dealer where I live at because those people are all about numbers and not helping uh, people trying to repair their stuff on their own and I basically had to hunt down for the coil cap number for myself and if you need the the cap for your spark plug you want LB05EP and the stock number on NGK is an 8020 and this this is your actual boot because if you go into the dealer what they're going to tell you is that oh well we, we can't get that boot we, we need to order the whole uh, coil and I said well that's that's absurd you know and I ended up leaving but you know basically you've got your 90 degree elbow boot so this is actually the correct number for the boot that you need um, yeah, you get to turn this off. It's extremely rusty around the coil. From uh, the, I think this thing saw a lot of rain, is what it is. So we'll get this coil off of here and get this other one put on here. Shouldn't take too much time here. And just to make this a little easier, we'll remove this side cover. Now this thing, when I first uh, fired it up, it popped and it gagged, and I can tell that this four-wheeler hasn't been ran in a, quite a while. So every day I'm coming out here, and I'm not working on this thing every day, but I'm, I'm running it, and uh, like when I started it up for the beginning of the video, this thing fired right up. And when you go to change this spark plug, you need to make sure that the cylinder is cool, not hot to the touch. Because, you know, we are dealing with aluminum. You end up pulling this spark plug out with a hot cylinder head, you could damage it. And I'll try to zoom in here. Look at the rust, the corrosion on this coil. I mean, this thing has seen some water. And I imagine that's how that, uh, that other circuit breaker that I pulled out. This thing's just kind of been neglected. So... When you buy used four-wheelers and stuff like, especially stuff like this, a lot of people buy them, and then uh, what happens is, once they start to break down and it's too expensive to go into the shop, 
I mean, look at that connection there. Um, they just, they don't, they end up trading it in for another one, so. We'll go ahead and clean these up before we put the new coil in so we have a good decent ground here. Then we'll just pull the cover off and get the old coil out of here. If you're having any problems with this coil, man, just replace it. I'll tell you. And that AMR coil, it's going to be 10 times cheaper than this Polaris one. Okay, so we've got our old coil uh, pulled off. And now. We are going to get our new coil uh, ready here. Ooh, it actually came with instructions. Ugh. Huh. Anyway, so uh, what we're what we're gonna do is make sure why is that on there that's an extension that's kind of neat i don't think we'll need that much wire huh they put an actual extension on there wonder why they do that what in the world I don't think I don't think I'm gonna need that extension on there. There's enough wire. Oh, I see. Okay. I think there's gonna be enough wire there, and we're gonna take our new cap and we're gonna install our new cap onto the wire. Actually, sometimes it's easier to take the rubber fitting and go ahead and stick it on the coil wire and run it down. And then take your new cap and thread your new cap onto your wire. And you just want to twist this on until it gets tight. Really easy to do. And it'll get tight to where it won't turn anymore. And then take your rubber boot and run your rubber boot over. Just makes it a little easier. Done this, done this a few times. And uh, I can actually feel how much harder hard this wire this wire here it's hard it's, been, it's probably never been changed and then actually I'm going to read the instructions oh hey we got five steps remove stock coil hey we've done that untwist spark plug boot from stock coil wire well we're not going to do that because we already had another one bolt on AM, AMR coil to the previous stock coils mounting location Twist on spark plug boot, boot to the black AMR coil wire. Done did that. Connect yellow wire from AMR coil to black power wire of harness. Okay. So your, your yellow wire here that's on this AMR coil is basically essentially going to be your plug-in that was on here on your stock coil. So you're going to take your AMR, your yellow wire, and plug it into the old wire. And don't forget to reground the wire that's on there before. So this is actually the extension that come with the um, AMR coil. And actually, they might just throw that in there just in case you use it. But I don't think we're, I'm not going to use it. So 
I'll just hold on to that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to reconnect the old coil just like it was set up. And I believe that they put that extension coil on there because instead of putting the wire like this, because you're going to have this connection kind of in the way, they actually want you to mount it like this and run it over with the extension, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it on like this and then we're going to zip tie this out of the way. So, and don't forget to put your little ground back in. It went under this first post. Then we'll go ahead and snug these up. It's not going to take a lot of, a lot of force to tighten this up. And I went ahead and sprayed this out and cleaned this connector out here. So we'll go ahead and just connect this connector like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some zip ties. these wires in so they don't bounce around just like so Okay, and now what we're going to do before we run the spark plug boot is I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing over and make sure we got spark. So what we will do is we'll connect the spark plug here now. Oh, actually, I don't know if I need to. Uh, nope, it'll just connect in. You'll hear it snap in. Then we'll go ahead and ground this uh, out on the heat shield and see if we got a spark. And we got spark. So we'll go ahead and pull the other plug out and install the new plug. And I'll tell you this, I just went to touch this spark plug and son of a bitch, it's, it's, uh, it's not even tight in there. I haven't touched this or anything. This dealership I'm so upset at this dealership that I bought this ATV from. Look at this. I'm going to be able to pull this pull this spark plug out with my hands. I mean, this is a freaking joke that this that they did not completely service this ATV. I mean, I could have started this thing up and blowed this spark plug out the goddamn cylinder hole and stripped all the threads on this cylinder. Look at that. Now I tell you what, I told you in my other video that it was running too rich, that there was too much fuel. Look how black that is. I just can't believe this. And as always, before you install a spark plug, just a little bit of anti-seize will go a long way. And actually the spark plug gap, if you're watching this video, is at .024. Um, I haven't really got on the forums to see what everybody else is running, but... 
what we'll do before we end up souping this four wheeler up is we'll just put it back to stock uh, stock specs here and then we're gonna reinstall our spark plug and you just want to thread this in by hand to make sure that it's gonna thread in and that actually was uh, the whole deal with this spark plug being loose that I should have checked that before I even started the four-wheeler but I'm very limited on my time so that should just be a usual check when you buy something spark plug fuel uh, all fluids you should just really make sure that you're checking all that stuff before you run it because like the rear end of this four-wheeler it is just a mess the all them boots I don't even want to ride it in case I damage the housing that the the bearings are in for the independent rear suspension I get I can't wait to get into that I guarantee that there is hardly any grease in that stuff okay so we've got this finger tight this spark plug I got a little anti-seize on my finger so then we're gonna go ahead should be a 16 probably easier with the gas tank off we're gonna go ahead and try to might have to get a small extension tighten this thing down we just want to go a half a turn to put the spark plug in the cylinder that should be good then we'll want to replace the we'll run the coil wire the back way that it was run and we will put the coil wire on the spark plug sure that that uh, you've got enough room there so it's not real tight because it'll move a little bit as you're riding and with the new uh, spark plug and coil let's see if we get started should be all right
so that's pretty much uh, it for today. Highly recommend the AMR coil. If you need a replacement coil, it beats the uh, factory Polaris pricing, and they're just known to be good coils. Um, next week, hopefully, or whatever, whenever the next video comes out, I think I'm going to go ahead and start get started on the braking system. For the, we'll put new pads on the front and rear, and then it'll be. I, I basically am going to get this thing ready to be rolled out before I end up riding it. So, because like I said, the gas, the the carburetor is leaking fuel. I, I'm just not going to take it out um, without it being right. And I've got to go ahead and order some more. Uh, I'm out of antifreeze for the uh, ATV motorcycle, so I've got to order some Amsoil antifreeze. But uh, yeah, keep following, subscribe, and like whatever. I don't know. I'm out here. I got to go to work.